Helios. And after he got into the lab and was working there for a few weeks, you know, they, they were doing these phylogenetic analyses of, of, of uh, uh, proteins in zebrafish, and he happened to mention to his advisors that he couldn't possibly write any papers about this stuff because he doesn't believe in evolution. And he got fired. <laughs> Which I, I thought was, the pro that's exactly what I would do to somebody who tried to get a job with these. Okay, well, that's fine, then you're fired, you're out of here. Uh, he then tried to sue his way back into the laboratory. I don't know at what point, because what, what's he going to do in the laboratory? <laughs> sit around and make up stories. I, it, 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 it was a pointless exercise. Uh, fortunately, the courts did turn him down. I think he has also ended up now at Liberty University last night. <laughs> okay, the last case. Jonathan Wells. Uh, Jonathan Wells is, is kind of, is, is kind of my nemesis. He's, he's a guy I, I simply cannot stand. Jonathan Wells uh, got his degree at the University of California, Berkeley. He actually got a degree from Berkeley, which some of you may have heard of. It's a fairly reputable university, uh, fairly well known in my field of developmental biology. There's lots of great people working there. It's, a, it's an impressive place. It's a, it's a good place to have on your CV, is, is having gotten a degree from Berkeley. And, and there he is. Uh, Jonathan Wells is, uh, he's on record. He actually said that he specifically went to the University of California, Berkeley to get his degree because he was requested to do so by father to help him destroy Darwinism. That was specifically his goal. Uh, father, of course, was the Reverend Sun Young Moon. He's a Mooney. And, you know, it's, it's, it's blatant. This is a guy who's specifically gone out and gotten his degree, so specifically to get the credentials, the authority, to be able to say that he is a legitimate scientist who descends from Darwinism. Uh, I do not know how he got out of Berkeley. I actually gave this talk at the University of California, Berkeley, earlier this summer. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I got up in front of the, this was in front of the graduate program, and I asked them, how did you let this jerk get through your graduate program? What, what's wrong with you guys? You know, and uh, they couldn't answer. Question, yes? Excuse me? I don't know. But he's, he's another case? Uh huh. Oh, well, he's a chemist. He doesn't count. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, there, there, there are a fair number of chemists who are, are actually creationists, and it doesn't interfere so much with their work because uh, chemistry tends not to have much of a historical component to their sciences. But denying the history of life on Earth is kind of a barrier to actually comprehending evolutionary theory. So that, that's a real problem. Yes. Should Kurt Weiss, you know, Kurt Weiss is actually a, somebody I have a little respect for because he's very honest about it. Kurt Weiss is a guy who, who actually got his degree at Harvard working under Stephen Jay Gould. And he, he later, he's written, he's written about his, his story there. Uh, he, he actually said he sat down with the Bible and he went through the Bible and thought about all the parts he'd have to remove if he accepted evolution. And he had a decision to make whether he would accept evolution and reject the Bible, or to accept the Bible and reject evolution. And he, he simply said, I simply decided I was going to stick with the Bible. And that's, that's kind of an honest opinion. I, that, I, I think he's crazy, but that's, you know, that's, that's fair. He was honest about what he was doing. These guys, no, they are not honest at all. They're, they're kind of sneaky. Yes? Uh, let, let me defer that one a little while, okay? Maybe you can ask me that one a little later. Yeah, what, how do I account for Francis Collins in his book, The Language of God? Uh, you don't want me to get too interpret my language just yet, right? So, a little later. Okay, so anyway, I was at, at Berkeley and I asked them about this stuff, and uh, they, they did not have an answer for me. And uh, you know the the, th the truth is I, I think there's a, a couple of open, dirty little secrets about graduate programs, and and one is that we always like to get graduate students because graduate students are cheap labor and we do not want to turn them away even if they're creationists because they can still run gels and grind up things for us. Okay, <laughs> so there there's a little bit of reluctance to just 
kick people out. There's also a kind of territoriality going on that, uh, that often what happens with graduate programs is that graduate students sort of become the serfs of the particular, the advising director of the lab. And if that director has some clout, nobody else wants to cause trouble with the big man in the department. So there are ways that you can get in and get through this. And anyway, I brought this up at Berkeley. They, they didn't have an answer. And what I, what I think is really the root of the problem here is that many graduate programs are highly specialized. And uh, we do not test our graduate students sufficiently. That we do not in, we do not enforce a broader knowledge of biology. We are happy with graduate students who can run gels and can answer this one specific, very narrow question that will fulfill a requirement in our grants. And that's good enough. And I don't think that's really good enough for the long-term health of the university. Yes. Yes, you. <laughs> Yes. How can you deny the degree? We can. We can. That, that, uh, that I, I'm afraid I, I kind of agree with many people who say that we can't go back and retroactively say, well, Marcus Ross is no good, so he should have his degree re removed. Uh, we can't do that because he met the requirements of the time. What I'm saying is that what we ought to be doing in the university system is broadening the requirements and requiring these students to have a, a greater depth of knowledge in a... In a in the field of biology as a whole. Uh, the other thing I was thinking would be a really great thing to do is to require recording of all preliminary examinations for the, the degree so that we can get these guys on tape saying, well, yes, I believe, the, you know, I, I have evidence that these mosasaurs are 65 million years old and so forth, which would be great to trot out and embarrass them when they're then in front of their audiences of creationists. Yes? Yes, exactly, but that's, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm saying we're getting a record of this would be really useful and having a policy where students have to have a broader knowledge is just the fact that you have gone through and successfully completed a graduate program in biology should mean that you have a better knowledge of the broader aspects of the theory of evolution, that this should be dem able to be demonstrated and that we can then say that these people who are, like, when Marcus Ross gets in front of his audience, we can say that, well, obviously you lied to your committee in order to pass if you're now saying the Earth is 6,000 years old. It's, it's not, to, we, we can't block them from getting their degrees with that, with that, but we can make a good political effect in reducing their credibility. Yes? Have, have you read any PhD theses lately? <laughs> uh, many theses are, are very, very narrow. They're very technical and very specific. And you will often find that it's not quite that clear. And in particular, if you're doing something in paleontology, you can simply phrase everything in terms of the particular geological strata which you're, talk you're talking about. So he's got an out. Oh, he's, he's asking if... if if the evidence that Marcus Ross, for instance, uh, actually has accepted some aspects of evolutionary theory or the history of the Earth for purposes of getting his degree, it might be in his thesis. And yes, but it's sort of indirect and really hard to get at. Yes? There are thousands of graduates every year, and you have only three people on your list. Oh, yeah. So maybe the problem is not that big. Oh, it's not. It's not. I would, I would say no, it's not. The most... Most of the graduate students I've had that I've known are, are great people, and, and this is a minority problem. But then, of course, what happens is people like Jonathan Wells gets his degree, and he touts it very heavily, and then he gets, uh, this is where he is now, he's at the Discovery Institute, and he's writing books where he makes absurd claims about evolution. And he makes absurd claims about the scientific establishment, pretending that he was once a member of that scientific establishment. Jonathan Wells has actually said that we scientists are all out there in a great conspiracy to hide the evidence of creation from the rest of the world. And anybody who's been in a scientific conference knows that this is not true. That there is all kinds of argument and dissent going on, and it's 
it's not on the level that he's talking about. 